Sup fools, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about how to make a great piece of cinema like this. If you haven't seen this short film yet, I uploaded it on Sunday, so you can watch it, I think, right here. I'm going to fade it in, you can just click this and you can watch it. Today we're going to talk about how we made this and take you a little bit behind the scenes so you get the idea how a film like this can happen. Mm, titty. First of all, you might think um, it was a big production and you know, weeks and months of pre-production, all this stuff. It's not entirely true. Um, the entire crew were three people. Jahim, the creator, he operated the camera, Aramis, who acted and wrote the script, and me, who edited and acted, so it was just the three of us. And the way we actually made this happen is actually funny. We shot this thing on a Monday, and we had the idea on the Sunday before, and we were like, hey, Jahim is in town. He's from Atlanta, so Jahim was in town. I was like, we should shoot something. Let's make something happen. We got time. Let's, let's do something. So I had this idea, this, this stupid idea, where a soldier was fighting a wizard. I had no idea how this could make sense, but I talked to Aramis about that, and he came up with like a concept, and which is based on an anime he was watching. So Aramis, Jahim, and I, we had this FaceTime meeting on Monday morning, where basically I broke down the idea I had, to Aramis and Jahim, so they kind of have an idea what we're doing. And it was pretty clear I was playing the, the soldier, Aramis was playing the wizard because of the looks and kind of made sense and this is what we're into. And we started to get like equipment and props and everything together. I have this entire closet filled with guns. My friend and I, we bought all those guns, so those are airsoft guns. We just bought a bunch of those just for like action shoots and stuff like this. So I just took my three favorite put them in the back and, and try to hide them so when we go from set to set we, you know, they're not exposed and the police is not gonna shoot us. And then I went to Jahim, picked him up and while I was picking him up, Aramis was writing the script within 20 minutes and then he sent it to me as a voice message. So while I was picking Jahim up and going to Aramis' place, I could listen to the script and learn my lines while I was going because you might not know, but I'm not an actor, so I have a very hard time to learn the script. So I listened to it over and over while we were going to Aramis' place. At this point, it was like 11 a.m., and we got to Aramis, we took the camera, equipment, and all this stuff. We went to the first location, because this short film took place in two locations, which were completely different places, but we tried to make it look like it was the same spot. So we went to location number one. Um, it was like 11.30 at this point. We still had lot, lots of time. We started shooting this first scene where Aramis was doing his spell ritual thing. We still don't know in the story what we're doing, but at this point I'm shooting with the sniper rifle from location B uh, towards location A. And we just tried to match it that it looks like, okay, it was the same location, but it wasn't. So we shot all those scenes. In the very last shot, we, we wanted to have two drone shots where we just see the entire location or most of the location from the air because it always looks cool and you can increase the production value pretty easily. An issue with drones though is that DJI drones, for example, they're tracked by the system or, or something. So you can't fly drones just anywhere. If it's like a restricted area, you can't fly drones. But this one, you can. So we flew this drone and then suddenly, after we finished the first take, we saw park rangers, they were pointing at us because there were like signs that you can't fly drones here. So we knew that we were doing something illegal. Um, so those park rangers were pointing at us. We just grabbed our equipment and we just left. And so we only got one of those two drone shots. And while we were like leaving, I was like packing my equipment kind of in the back because I didn't, because they were, I think they were following us. So we, should, we basically just tried to hide and uh, get, get away. And we did. Um, so we didn't get the second drone shot, but in, in the end it was fine. And so we just left to location number two. We knew location number two because of 
a shoot we, we did like years ago at this drag ball fight scene. We shot at a very similar place, it was the same hills. So we knew kind of where we were going. Um, so that was pretty easy. Then we just had to hike a little bit, which, which was kind of hard with all of the gear. And I mean, we were shooting with very limited gear. I'm gonna talk about that uh, later on, but we didn't have that much with, with us. But you know, going through all the hills and hikes and trying to find a good spot where we could shoot without getting interrupted, without scaring hikers with all our guns. So that was the tricky part there, but we were also shooting against daylight because we had to get it done on this day. At this point it was like 2 p.m. So surely we were losing daylight soon because it's winter time, so we're gonna lose daylight. We started with the shot where I was the sniper. We didn't have a shot list or anything or a storyboard. Everything was just in our heads. So we had to make sure that everything connects and it makes sense in the story. So the most important part was he teleports away to my location first, but first I'm shooting at him. So it kind of had to make sense. I had to shoot the one direction, he had to look the other direction. So it kind of made sense, 180 rule wise. So all of these things I had to keep in mind. And also Jahim as the camera operator, we had to think about these things. So it made sense. So then we started shooting the dialogue. We shot the dialogue on lab mics. Uh, which we connect to, to to an iPhone because it was very windy there So we just had to make sure that no wind noises fucked up our shots Should we ignore the wind and just do it so the Sun was going down we were all stressed because we had still so much to do uh, We had this entire action scene which obviously wasn't planned. We were just choreographing while we were shooting so we were like okay maybe now you could do this and then you're gonna um, block it like this and then we just kind of figured it out along the way we didn't do many takes we basically just shot one uh, looks fine okay moving on we had no time so we rushed through the shoot and tried to make it as good as we could in a very limited amount of time but everybody stayed focused we had no breaks we just rushed it through we didn't even have water up there because we didn't want to carry water so we were dehydrated it was hot was it hot or cold i don't know it was hot it was a warm day but it went well so we just had one little incident um i did this one jump where where he shoots this magic thing and i tried to dodge throw out of the frame and i fell on something i fell on my uh, on like a rock or something and my entire back started bleeding um yeah and that hurt like a motherfucker but uh we just kept shooting um it's still there by the way we shot it like 10 days ago it's still there but i'm recovering i'm good so also the action martial arts scene in the end we shot it like five six times and in the end we shot it with a drone as well and then in the edit i decided man this looks so cool as a white shot just like those two warriors fighting for their lives in the white show. We see this beautiful scenery. Um, Aramis choreographed this little fight scene. Um, and we just winged it, really. We just like, okay, you have a knife, you have an ax, what can we do with it? And then we just started fighting and then we figured it out. Aramis did a great job choreographing this thing. Props to him. The, the issue with the drone shot was, that happens like all the time. The drone operator, Jahim, he was in frame. I had to fix that in post, but this is something you just have to deal with. And fixing something like this in post, it's not that hard to do if you know how. If you're interested in something like that, I could make another tutorial. Just let me know. Anywho, so pretty much we shot this thing in like six hours, maybe seven throughout the day. And I think we did a very good job rushing this thing, but still getting the shots done. Um, thanks to great teamwork, really. We could rely on each other and we had a great communication. Everybody was stressed, but we had a great time because in the end we were doing what we love. So that was awesome. Yeah, and then I had to edit all of that. And I basically didn't touch the footage for like two days because this is a thing I've learned throughout the years. If you shoot something and edit something yourself, you wanna have like a time gap between shooting and editing. Otherwise, when you start editing right away, you are way too attached to your footage. You love every shot too much because you know how much time and work you put in those. So basically your editing gets way too long because you just like every shot. You're gonna have a hard time editing this thing as opposed to wait a couple of days and then you look at the footage as if somebody else shot it. And then you can edit it without being biased. So let's talk about equipment real quick. 
what did we shoot on and how did we do it. Um, mostly we were shooting on a Sony A7S III, which is uh, the camera I'm talking to right now. On this gimbal, it's a Ronin S, and this is the drone we used. It's, uh, I hope I pronounce it properly, Auto Evo 2. Um, shoots 8K, we shot everything in 4K, and this is pretty much what we used. Um, for some shots, we use this tripod because for some shots, for like visual effects shots, it's way easier to shoot on a tripod. If that was shot handheld or on a gimbal, it would have been very tricky because I wanted to make it look like a one shot. But what I actually did, I threw it away, freeze, froze, freeze, froze, either way, and then waited till Aramis threw me the gun. So basically, if that was shot on a, on a gimbal, it, it wouldn't have worked that well. So that's why we had this tripod there too. It's a Manfrotto, um, whatever, I have this tripod for like years, it's, it's great. The lens we use is a Sigma 2.8, uh, 24 till 70. Um, it's a great range because you can zoom in and zoom out, so you get uh, lots of light. We also had an ND filter, so we still get the nice depth of field without playing with the shutter, so th this is how we shot this great piece of cinema. In post-production, I edited everything on Premiere. I did the visual effects in After Effects. Uh, music and sound design is something Aramis did, so that was a great cooperation. I just finished the rough cut, sent it to Aramis, and while I was doing the animation, visual effects, color grading, all that stuff, Aramis was working on the sound design already. He was working on the music, and he was working on the sound effects, all that stuff was up to him, so we could work in the same time to save time. And then in the end, I just threw his sound design, he just sent it to me, I put it into the edit, and then voila, it was done. What I really love about this video is that like just three creative minds, they just threw their heads together, made something happen in a very short amount of time, and I think it looks very cool. The production value is very high, and we just winged it with like one mirrorless camera, a drone, and just lots of willpower to make it cool because we all wanted to make it a very cool video we can be proud of and this is so awesome that we could make this like within a week really it was a very hard though i was like editing and doing the visual effects for like three days and three nights nights straight so it is a lot of work don't get me wrong but we winked it within a week and this is fucking awesome so why i'm saying all that i'm saying all that to show you guys that you can make it happen too. You don't have to wait for funding or a crew or like, there's like many excuses why you shouldn't start right now. And this video just shows that you don't have to wait. Just take whatever camera you have, take your best friends, even though maybe they're not the most qualified people, but you trust them and you have a chemistry. You can make it happen if you want to. The only thing you need, just the motivation to, to start and then just make it happen. Anyways guys, that was lots of fun and I want to do it again. Of course those videos take a lot of time and we nobody gets paid so we can't do it that often. But I want to do it as often as I can and if those videos get more views we can make more of those and everybody wins. Especially me. Anyways guys, if you have any questions about any of that, please let me know in the comments below and I can't wait to make another great piece of cinema.